Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Monday, April 8, 2013. This is Texan TV News from the Tarleton State University campus in Steubenville, Texas, and I am Julie Gutierrez. In today's headlines, highlights from Tarleton's choir concert, Fishing for Foster's event, a big success, Mother in Dublin busts car window out to save her child, New Texas Tollway reaches only half of its expected use, National News highlights from the Associated Press News Minute, Police in Gaza City imposing strict regulations on citizens. Clippers win against Lakers Sunday. Texan baseball and Texan softball secure wins, as well as today's weather. Now for today's top story. In Campus News, Tarleton sponsored a choir concert on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. in the Clyde H. Wells Fine Arts Center. The program featured the Tarleton University Singers and the Cross Timbers Civic Chorale. Dr. Troy Robertson, the director of choirs at Tarleton, said that the choir performs six concerts a year. Funding comes from Student Life and University President Dominic DeTavio's office. Dr. Robertson also said that 20% of ticket sales are used to support the program. He said that his singers usually perform folk songs, familiar art and spiritual music, and pop songs. I spoke with Dr. Robertson about future concerts, how ticket sales support the chorale program, and who compiles the programs. My name is Troy Robertson, and I'm the director of choirs at Tarleton State University. Okay, so are there any future plans for other concerts? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're always planning uh, pretty far ahead. I've got uh, some of the lineup for next year, uh, including uh, a couple of the concerts. One is with the Fort Worth Symphony, oh. and we're going to be continuing our tradition of performing part of Handel's Messiah. Um, are the tickets enough to support your program, or does the university have to help pay for it? Uh, we actually get funding from a few different sources. One of them is summer camps, so mm -hmm. I'm here in the summer helping to run a camp. Uh, and we have staff that helps and then there's a bunch of high school students that come. Mm -hmm. So the fees from that help pay for the program. Uh, do the students come with the program or do the professors come up with the program? Uh, I'm actually the only professor in the choral mm -hmm. department. I mean, it's just me. So I do, I would say, 95% of the planning. Okay. Students occasionally will come to me with a piece of music and I'll say, that looks great, let's do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I plan to have more student input for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, so the parts of the program I haven't planned, I'm going to get some student input on. I'm also going to have student liaisons for the Cross Timbers group, which is the major works that we do, one in the fall, one mm -hmm. in the spring. I'll have some student liaisons for that. In other campus news, according to Tarleton.edu, kids from Foster's Home for Children spent the day fishing with members of the Tarleton Bass Club in the fourth annual Fishing for Foster's event. The day included the kids learning how to bait a hook, cast, and reel in a fish. They also got a talk from Zach Havens, game warden with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Zach Jones, the secretary of the Tarleton Bass Club, said the event is designed to teach them about fishing in the outdoors. Hunter Edwards, vice president of the Bass Club, said most of the kids don't get to fish every day like we do, but it's great watching them have fun to learn to fish. The event was made possible with donations of food, money, and bait. In regional news, according to the Steamville Empire Tribune, 25-year-old Michelle Garcia was leaving Green Creek Veterinary Hospital when she strapped her baby into a car seat and closed the doors without realizing they were locked. Garcia's dog was also locked inside the car. Her automatic lock on her keychain stopped working and she requested assistance from the vet's employees. They tried replacing the batteries in the clicker as well as trying to prop open the car door with the screwdriver to try to reach the lock, but the efforts failed. She called 911 after about 30 minutes. The sheriff's deputy arrived 20 minutes later, but did not have the proper tools to unlock the doors. Impatient, Garcia smashed out the back window with a tire iron. Moments later, Everath County Volunteer Fire Rescue arrived with the proper tools to get inside the vehicle. Fire Chief Kenneth Howell said 911 should be called immediately when a child is locked inside a car. He also said that it does not matter if it's hot or cold outside. If a child is locked inside a car, it's always an emergency. Garcia was told by the deputy to wait for the proper tools to arrive to get into the car, but since the baby was crying, she took action on her own. And now, today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. In Texas news, a billion-dollar toll road extension between Seguin and Austin has only received about half of its expected drivers since its opening in October. The 85-mile-per-hour toll road, which is the fastest in the U.S., has recorded 202,861 vehicles, which have traveled on it. 
According to Moody's Investor Service, the private builder of the tollway, SH-130 Concession Company, is facing a lowering of its credit rating due to lower than expected usage. The 130 toll road extension cost about $1.4 billion to build. The private company is in a 50-year $50 lease with Texas to continue the operation of the tollway. If revenues do not increase, SH-130 Concession Company could have difficulties making debt payments, including part of a $430 million federal loan. A spokesman for concession says that as public awareness of the new toll extension screw up, more vehicles will use the toll rates. And now, for the top national news from the Associated Press. This is AP News Minute. Secretary of State John Kerry is remembering a young diplomat killed in Afghanistan Saturday. 25-year-old Ann Smedinghoff was killed in a bombing, the first diplomat killed since the Benghazi attacks. Members of Rick Warren's Southern California Church began Sunday services with a prayer for the popular evangelical pastor. He and his family are coping with the apparent suicide of his 27-year-old son, Matthew. Fashion designer Lily Pulitzer has died at age 81. She is known in part for starting her own line of tropical print dresses by accident. And Pope Francis was formally installed as Bishop of Rome Sunday. Francis arrived a half hour early to bless a plaque, renaming a corner of the piazza outside the church after Pope John Paul II, who died in 2005. I'm Matt Friedman, the Associated Press, with AB News Minute. In international news, Hamas police in Gaza City have started grabbing young men with long or gel-styled spiky hair off the streets, muddling them into jeeps, mocking them and shaving their heads. It is the latest sign that Islamic militants are imposing their strict practices on the population. Hamas has been slowly forcing its fundamentalist interpretation of the religion on already conservative Gaza since it overtook the territory in 2007. The new crackdown on the long hair and tight or low waist pants, in several cases accompanied by beatings, appears to be one of the most aggressive phases of the campaign so far. 19-year-old house painter had shoulder-length hair before police grabbed him and shaved his head Thursday. The only thing I want to do is leave this country, said the man, who despite his ordeal defiantly wore outlawed narrow leg tan khaki Sunday in sports. According to the AP, there was no celebrating on court or in the locker room for the Lakers who lost 95 to 109 against the Clippers on Sunday. The Clippers clinched the first Pacific division title in the franchise history against a team that has long outshined them. It just feels like something we were supposed to do, said Chris Paul, who scored 24 points and 12 assists for the Clippers. It means we're headed in the right direction. We're not satisfied. In Tarleton sports, according to tarleton.edu, the number 28 ranked Tarleton Texans defeated the Incarnate Word Cardinals 11 to three in Lone Star Conference play at Cicel Ballo Baseball Complex in Stephenville on Sunday. The Texans improved to 23-11 and won overall 12 and four in the LSC as Tarleton took the series from the Cardinals three to one. Incarnate Word drops to 21 and 14 overall and seven and nine in conference play. The Texans will break from LSC play on Wednesday, April 10, hosting a midweek non-conference game against number 12 St. Mary's. First pitch is set for 3 p.m. in Steamville and Tarleton. In Tarleton, softball, softball's junior Randy Fentress took a no-hitter down the, to the final batter en route to pitching a complete game, one hitter in the match of the three-game series against Eastern New Mexico. The Texans won the game 6-0. Fentress ended with the complete game, shut down on one hit, three walks, and four strikeouts. The Texans have now won four straight games in LSC series play and will return home for a primetime conference matchup against Midwestern State Friday at 5 p.m. The game can be listened to on the internationals. And in it's weather according to weatherchannel.com. Today's forecast calls for a high of 79 degrees and a low of 63. It will be mostly cloudy with south winds ranging from 20 to 30 miles per hour. There's a 10% chance of precipitation during the day. Today's broadcast was produced by Ian Traub, Lance McFarlane, Becca Burnett, and Nick Duvall. You can follow Texan News Service on Facebook and Twitter. Also check us out on www.texannews.net. I am Julie Gutierrez. Tune in tomorrow for the latest news from the Tarleton State University campus in Steubenville, Texas.